like in the event that we can't land a Sean Payton, like I still think that, you know what I'm saying, we're in good hands. You know, obviously we already talked about the risk and shit, but I think I think we're still in good hands. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, man, I mean, so we talked about Idro, we talked about uh shit, who do oh uh, Thomas Brown, you know, um another dark horse I know that you liked a lot was uh Mike Kafka. You know what I'm saying? So Mike Kafka was you know what I'm saying, under Andy Reid. I think his first coaching job was, I mean, honestly, man, honestly, bro, it's kind of, as far as, like, experience, his, uh, I mean, it's kind of similar to, like, a, a D'Amico in that, like, he was a, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, a, he was under, like, one coaching staff, and then he got, you know, hired by another coaching staff also, also. so, I mean, that's the difference, but, like, he's only been coaching for, like, five or six, seven years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was, and that that's the thing is like, well, one, one quick last thing that he made it really interesting about the whole Tomlin thing, oh, yeah. I didn't even realize that he mentioned Tomlin, well, is anytime you hear well, a GM mention Tomlin, like you've asked, if you hear any coaches talk about him, the first mm -hmm. thing you talk about is swagger and culture, and, the, oh, and, the, and he's able to build up a buy-in, like he was able to work with Antonio Brown for how long after that, after he got those contracts and kind of keep shit together. And he's worked with so many different uh, people like that. So that's, that's, that's a huge thing to keep an eye on, but yeah, getting back to uh, Kafka, he he's the reason I think he's the best. If we're going, if you're going offensive candidate outside of uh, Sean Payton, probably my top candidate and, and probably won't be, he be in there be an option but who knows maybe he will maybe he sees the blank slate of Houston I just think I could see him going to more of an established situation and kind of filling in for one of the spots that uh Sean doesn't take um but when you're the backup quarterback for as long as he was and with so many different organizations you're basically a coach you're basically the personal game day coach for the whoever the starter is so if you look at all the different teams that he cycled through as backup and also having kind of where his background came at uh, Northwestern, where you have a, a very super uh, pass heavy situation mm -hmm. where he would have to process 70 times a game. And so, you know, there's a brain there. And, and the one of the things that kind of you don't even have to trust me or trust any person's opinions on that one article that came out that was super interesting was talking about I think it was on the athletic was speaking on uh Dable's hiring process for his current staff and why it worked out so well mm -hmm. and and the gist of it is that he was able to basically take away a lot of the favorite not the favoritism but just kind of the same the stuff that usually catches up and and messes up uh, coaching staff swears it's more based on relationships and stuff rather than like obviously there's to be a competency of working together but mm -hmm. there's more of a situation where you have to have uh, a certain a certain a really high level of performance and a and be like kind of the best in your field and and for him to basically be able to get Kafka out of um was he in Buffalo too? Kafka? Yeah. Now, Kafka, he only coached he went in, from uh, KC to New York, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. So he's he's come from he's got probably from two of the two of the top offensive minds at the moment, right? In terms of innovation and, and making the most out of out of what you have um within Andy Reid and uh Brian Dable. Mm -hmm. So when you, you bring in a guy like that it kind of tells you right away that, okay, there's a certain level of confidence. He's one of the top offensive minds and he was able to back it up in a way he's kind of like accelerated the development of Daniel Jones this year in a way that he's now going to be most likely a guy that's able to get a decent payday in free agency. If he decides to leave the giants, or even if he stays with the giants, he'll probably get a good payday. Uh -huh. So there, you know, there's a developmental thing with quarterbacks. He's worked with so many different quarterbacks. So you won't have to worry about that. And the other thing that kind of was the positive for me with him is that he seems to be um, that he seems to be able to work with lesser talent in a way that none of the other offensive minds have done. Like he took a Giants team that really 
didn't have a number one receiver, had Kenny Galladay just loafing all over the field. And basically on offense, you had uh, you had Saquon Barkley and nothing else for the most part with two tackles that were one that was good and one that was extremely young and still figuring out the position. And he was able to push them above 500 offensively. And Dable bringing in a guy like Wink Martindale was able to, I mean, that's another guy I love as a, as a, like a dark horse. I don't think he's, he's been interviewed by the Colts. Mm -hmm. I think they're the only team, maybe one other team that interviewed him, but it's, I mean, you bring in creative guys like that. And those are the kind of guys that he would bring in to kind of work with him. I think it would really accelerate the rebuild and kind of give a clear, he's got a clear, calm, but a very strong kind of perspective in the way he talks. It's very deliberate. It, it actually reminds me similar of, I mean, it, it does have some Sean Payton to it because Sean Payton similarly was a, a college quarterback that played at a high level, set all the records similar. He didn't get to the pro level. So Kafka around a reach level, reached a higher level. And obviously Kafka is at a much younger age than, than Sean was when he got his head coaching situation. But that's just kind of the way it is now. Everything gets accelerated. But yeah, that's kind of where, um, that's why I'm I'm so so much on the Kafka bandwagon. Mm -hmm. It would just be a matter of, I think the biggest the biggest issue or the biggest concern would be how much the power the power structure between him and Casario, where how much would Kafka really want to pick his own guys versus it's a similar thing to Jonathan Gannon, right? Because they're in similar situations a little bit with their experience and all that um coaching wise they're both young and so it, it would be interesting it's all that that a lot of these coaching candidates are gonna um kind of come down to whether or not these guys want to work with Casera or not and, and mm -hmm. they feel comfortable in the organization but that's that's with every hire but yeah what are your thoughts on uh, Kafka is there anything I I Kafka, no, I mean, I think it's interesting, like, like you said, I mean, one thing that I think is like really, really important is like, you look at guys who've had success and you see like, you know, obviously, I, I mean, if you look deep enough, there's an example of anything of, of a lot of different ways to end up being successful. But I mean, you know, when you see guys that come from like different sets of like, you know, experience, like, you know, like, I mean, look at, uh, I mean, you know, Kafka, not Kafka, Dabo, you know, so many like, um, you know, so many just different jobs and different opportunities to like learn and grow from like veterans, you know what I'm saying? Would have been like Romeo Cornell, uh, who else, uh, uh, Saban, Belichick, you know what I'm saying? All that shit, you know, even, uh, you know, even just the experience of coaching. Oh, Sean McDermott, that whole yeah, staff yeah, there, like exactly. Kid Dorsey. Yeah. He did work with Kid Dorsey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Ken Dorsey was the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. So he's got that whole, mm -hmm. so there's just a wealth there, yeah. And he obviously worked with him. I'm sure Dave, Dabble worked with Dable or Dabble, whatever I'm going to say it, but um, the they probably worked hand in hand a ton of time throughout mm -hmm. the, throughout the week and everything, because I'm sure he was super involved in the offense right right right. so so like with that say like Kafka although he doesn't have he's like he doesn't have that I mean like you kind of you know talked about is that like you know he's seen you know you've seen him work with Andy Reid who I know like you know he's been around Andy Reid for four or five years I mean I'm sure that he got to get a lot of information from him just about just all the offenses that he has coached and then to go from that to working with the coach that helped develop Josh Allen. And then as you see, you see as the year progressed, just how how different, you know what I'm saying, how, how, how much more diverse that they called the games and all that stuff. So to me, it's kind of like it's a very, very accelerated process that, you know, he went through. But that's two really completely different styles of like, you know what I'm saying, coaching that now, I mean, is he going to get a job this cycle? Like, I mean, who knows? Like, right. Cause it's been, excuse me. It's been like, it's been coaching for like five years, you know what I mean? But like, you know, at the end of the day, like there's a lot of upside there. And I think. I think Ben Johnson falling out and not being in the, being under consideration now really gives him a shot of, of, of landing a coach, uh, a, a position. Yeah. yeah exactly. Both him and, and Steichen are both going to get jobs. And same with uh, Ryan. 
Right, right, right. I think those three are like pretty guaranteed. And then yeah. everyone else is kind of a, because how many openings are there? There's is there three, five? Like is five, there? right? Yeah. There's five. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven guys mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna touch on or have touched on already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 